What are the pros and the cons of the knife base classifier? Let's see. Knife base classifier is a very popular classification algorithm, which is easy and simple to use. So let's quickly recap how the knife base classifier works. Let's say you have a bunch of classes and given a new data point, you want to figure out what class it belongs to. You can use the base rule and write probability of the class given the data point is probability of the data given the class into probability of class by probability of data. This just follows from the basic conditional independence expansion or the Bayes theorem. So if we take the example of document classification into spam and ham, probability that a given document is spam given the words of the document is equal to the probability of the words themselves given the document is spam into probability of spam in general divided by probability of the words in the document. So uh, once again, you can find the probability of ham given words and you can see which is higher probability of spam given words or probability of ham given words and pick that class. So we can quickly look at a very small example. Let's say we have these three toy documents and we remove stop words and so on and only the prominent words are listed. So document one has promotion, bumper and winner and it's a spam document. Document two has deadline, meeting and promotion. It's a ham document. Document three has bumper, lottery and winner and it's again a spam document. Probability of spam in general is two by three here because there are two spams and one ham in our data set. This is our training data. Probability of ham is one by three similarly. Now if we want to compute probability of a particular word being generated given it's a spam document. For example, probability of promotion given it's spam is nothing but the number of times the word promotion occurred in spam document divided by the total number of spam document words. So that's equal to one by six since there are six words in spam documents and promotion occurred only once. Similarly, we can compute probabilities of other words being in either a spam document or a ham document. And then you can actually given a new document, let's say the new document has promotion, bumper and lottery. And you can cal calculate probability of spam given the new document as probability of spam into probability of promotion given spam into probability of bumper given spam into probability of lottery given spam. Right? Uh, and there's a denominator, which uh, is a normalization constant. So this is how the knife base classifier works. Now, what are some of the advantages of using knife base classifier? The first is that it is simple to implement. As you can see, we just need to use these simple formulas in order to compute, you know, the probabilities here and we can actually compute probability of a new document belonging to a particular class like spam or ham. It's very fast since there are no iterations at all. So you just have like, you know, a point computation for all these probabilities. You can just compute these probabilities as simple ratios, which is in fact the maximum likelihood estimate. And because of that, you don't need really an iterative solution that could take time. And wherever time is an important factor, knife base is like a great choice. The third advantage is that if the conditional independence assumption holds, we get great results. What do we mean by this? So the reason knife base is called knife is because it makes a knife assumption. The assumption is that probability of seeing a data point given the class is equal to the probability of the first feature given the class into probability of second feature given the class and so on. So it can be split into the product of probabilities of the features because it assumes that the features are conditionally independent given the class. And this assumption does not hold in a lot of cases and where it does knife base could do well. So one of the main disadvantages of knife base is the same thing, the conditional independence assumption because most applications do not have this kind of a property. So it's rather a simplistic model to use in a lot of cases. The next is the zero probability problem. So what we mean by this is, if you look at the same previous example, uh, 
when we actually encounter a feature that did not occur in a particular class, when we look at the test data, we would end up getting zero probabilities. So in this example, suppose I have a new document which is promotion, bumper and lottery, these are the words. Now probability of spam given the new document I could compute, but probability of ham given the new document will lead to problems because bumper is not really present in any of the ham documents in the training data. So probability of bumper given ham will end up being zero according to the usual knife base calculation. So how do we remedy this? This can be remedied through something called smoothing. So smoothing can be done as follows. So probability of a feature given the class we computed earlier as the number of occurrences of a feature for all data points belonging to that class divided by the total number of occurrences of all features for that class. Now we can add a smoothing factor, let's say S here and say probability of feature given class is the number of occurrences of feature for the class plus some S divided by the total number of occurrences of all features in the class plus S into number of features. So we just added a smoothing factor which could just be one in most cases. So all we are saying is we add a one to the numerator and then since we added a one for all features we add you know if there are n features we add an n to the denominator. Now let's say s equals one probability of this feature promotion given spam was earlier one by six since it occurred only once out of the six words in all spam documents but now we add a one to the numerator and we add a six to the denominator since we have six features so it becomes two by twelve. Similarly, we add a 6 to all the denominators and a 1 to all the numerators. And now the zero probabilities will not be zero anymore. So probability of meeting given spam is 1 by 12 instead of zero, even though meeting is not in any of the spam documents in the training data. Similarly, for the ham documents, probability of deadline given ham, you add a 6 to the denominator and a 1 to the numerator, just like you did for the spam. So this is called smoothing one way of smoothing there are many ways of smoothing right uh, and basically we end up with uh, non-zero probabilities and we can compute uh, the output other things that could go wrong with knife base include particularly if we have continuous variables as features then if we want to use multinomial knife base we need to actually bin the features and binning could actually lead to some problems if we don't bin them well and there are other alternatives called Gaussian knife base and a few other algorithms that can be used if we have continuous features, though they are not as commonly used as multinomial knife base. The final uh, disadvantage is that it is not great for imbalanced data. And the way to correct that is to use something called complement knife base, which we'll probably see in another video. So to recapitulate, we looked at how the knife base classifier works and we looked at the advantages and disadvantages of using the knife base classifier. Thank you.